let's talk about the game part of game dev. I keep saying we should build simple games in Unreal. For me specifically, I mean walking simulators. I think it's easier to build something like a walking simulator in Unreal than in any of its competitors. Even though it is theoretically a bigger, more difficult engine, it's pretty easy to make that kind of small game in comparison to any other engine. The two reasons I think that is, first, Unreal has end-to-end -end integration, so when you get near the end of your development cycle, you're not going to trip over something unexpected and break your neck. That's a real problem in many other game engines. The other big advantage that Unreal has is assets. As indie devs, we will have to supplement whatever we can make with things that other people have made, and in Unreal that's relatively straightforward. We live in a golden age of available assets. Is it perfect? No, there's a lot of problems with it, but we can supplement our weaknesses with other people's strengths, and that is extremely powerful. But it's not necessarily always going to lead you the right direction. It's very easy to get led astray by the assets and forget to make a game. This is more nuanced than it sounds, so let's talk about it. This is an Internet Cafe Simulator. You've probably seen YouTubers playing it. There's a million of these kinds of games, and the reason there are a million is because it's now possible. You can now make this kind of game. That was never possible before. All of these assets would have cost a fortune. It would have taken a team of, you know, 10 or 15 people to make this many assets 15 years ago. But these days, oh, you want NPCs? You just buy the NPC pack. You want buildings? You buy the building pack, and you spark them down wherever you want them. Even the way the NPCs spawn in and walk around, that's a code plugin. The menus and the drag-and-drop decorating, that's a code plugin. The devs didn't have to do any of that themselves. Now, this doesn't mean that the devs are lazy. Far from it. Anyone that develops a game is not lazy, because developing a game is an enormous amount of work. The dev clearly put in a lot of that work. They had to actually lay out the buildings, they had to do all the side quests and work with all the menus and that sort of stuff. There is a lot of work in this game. But despite that, if you play it, it feels strangely lazy and half-assed. That's not because the game dev is lazy and half-assed. That's because the assets don't line up with the play. This is something that is really important to understand, especially if you're an indie dev or a newbie. You have to actually provide an experience. The reason I keep saying that we should make walking simulators and adventure games in Unreal is because those games have an experience that gets along well with this kind of asset pack. But if you're trying to do something more complicated or more nuanced, then your play is likely going to require you to actually implement play. You've got to think about, well, how is the player going to get past this challenge? How are they going to be able to walk here? How are they going to be able to interact with these characters? Assets afford certain kinds of play. And now, if you've never heard of the term affordance before, basically what I mean is that the assets you use allow and encourage the kinds of play that you want to use. For example, let's say that you're making a game and you decide that you want to be able to have the player play dress up with the main character. In order to do that, you're going to need a lot of mesh variants of the main character so that you can let the player change those mesh variants. If you want to split that up into like upper wear and lower wear, then you're going to have to have dozens and dozens of mesh variants and then staple them all together with some very rigid rules and worry about whether or not they actually fit together. Even past that, how does that interact with your camera? If you're in a first person game, then you might only need to change their feet because that's all they can see when they look down. Whereas if you're in a third person camera, you might just want to focus on the back depending on whether or not they can spin the camera around and look at their front. There are a lot of differences in how you would make these assets. But if you're just buying assets, obtaining them somewhere, 
it could very well be that the kind of play you can offer here is different from what you what you wanted because the assets don't afford the exact play you wanted. This happens a lot with asset packs because the asset packs are pretty bounded. Like they're like this is our asset pack. Here's everything you'll need. And you're over here saying, well, I mean, can I have these guys uh, collect pieces of wood or something? I, I need to make them into workers. And the asset pack is like, what are you talking about? We don't know anything about that. And for a new dev, that can be a wall that is completely impassable. They might not be able to figure out how to let that asset group do something that that asset group never really thought about doing before. This is especially true if you're getting code plugins. For example, if you are spawning in a bunch of NPCs according to, you know, a code widget that lets you spawn NPCs in and have them walk a path, how can you get them to respond to the player? How can you get them to respond to the things the player builds? What can you do to make these characters more interactive? And the answer is, you're gonna have to know how to do this stuff. It's an enormous amount of work, especially if you don't even know how to start. The asset pack simply doesn't provide the kinds of functionality you need for the kinds of play you want to make. And if you're an indie dev, maybe that means you can't make that kind of play. Maybe you literally just can't make it. You don't know enough about how to do it, or you don't have the budget to put into it. But because of this, when we are, in, when we are integrating asset packs into our games, we are naturally going to face absolute walls where as an indie dev or a hobbyist we're not going to be able to get past that we're not going to be able to implement the exact kind of play we want because we can't figure out how the asset pack doesn't afford it this is definitely the case with games like uh, internet cafe simulator it's very clear that at some point this dev had a strong idea of how he wanted this game to play maybe several strong ideas, but he couldn't figure out how to actually make that flow. I've talked a little bit about how the assets afford play, like obviously if you can't do something with an asset then you can't do it in play. If you don't have a change of clothes then you can't allow the player to change clothes. But it runs a lot deeper than that, and this is where an example like Internet Cafe Simulator is really valuable. Because affording a kind of play doesn't necessarily mean that it's possible. Affording means that it is encouraged. Every asset in a game leaves an imprint on the player's mind and suggests that something specific is possible. So when we have a bunch of characters walking around our scene, it's something that tells us that we should be able to interact with these characters. We can get up in their face. Therefore, re -inter interacting with them in some way should be a major part of the game. But it can't be because the actual asset pack doesn't include any sort of algorithmic reaction system. It's just, you know, one-off interactions. Similarly, the way that these streets are laid out, the way the buildings look, uh, the way the menus pop up, all of this stuff suggests to the player that there should be a specific kind of play. But the game can't actually provide that kind of play. And so you end up with this janky mess that's not very compelling and you get lost really easily. An easy example of that is in this game, Internet Cafe Simulator, you'll starve to death. I think that every YouTuber that has played it has starved and fainted because of running out of hunger. The reason that happens is because there is no content indicating that maybe you should try and not die of hunger. They put in a hunger meter, but none of the assets in the game point to that hunger meter as something relevant. And even when I talk about assets, I don't necessarily mean static assets like a building or a piece of fruit but the systems and the way the interactions unfold all of those things fail to indicate that you can starve to death when we build ourselves a game 
It's important to understand the experience we want to offer, the fantasy we're trying to fulfill. And one of the biggest barriers to doing that is the fact that if we are importing assets, those assets may simply not do that. They, may, they might not be built to afford it. Even if it's theoretically possible that you can work your play in, the assets might not suggest that play. They might not make it possible for the player to flow into that play. This is why I keep recommending walking simulators, because you can usually work around this with a walking simulator. Uh, the kinds of interactions are usually pretty straightforward, and they don't need to be really carefully massaged. But no matter what kind of game you make, I want you to keep this in mind. Assets afford play, and that includes both allowing the play in the first place and also suggesting that play, making the player realize they can do that play. Just some basics. Have a good day.